the Cavaliers are working out a buyout for Sandra Drummond, who would fit into the Knicks financially wise. Could he still end up in NYC? Yeah, you listen, I said it a couple days ago. I'll say it again. I know there are a couple prominent voices in that Nick organization that see Drummond as a good fit, see him as a player that they should bring on. As of earlier this week, at least, there was no consensus on Drummond. There were some people who felt that he would not be a good fit, that this is not the right move. So I think that will continue to be debated uh, internally in New York. And they obviously have a financial advantage, right? Because they have that that cap space, I think it's around $15 million. So they can offer Drummond a four year, $64 million deal, I believe. And the other teams who are interested in certainly can't match that, can't come close to it. So I think the Knicks are going to at least talk to Drummond. I think that internal debate is gonna continue and Drummond's also gonna decide whether he wants to go chase a ring, uh, make an impact in the playoffs heading into free agency or secure himself financially by coming to New York. Very polarizing figure, as you said. Right now, if you know, if, once he gets bought out by the Cavs, since you don't have to trade for him in the short term, I wouldn't necessarily mind it. My thing is, if is if he's considering the Knicks over some more established contenders, maybe there's a promise there of a long term deal, and that's what I'm concerned with. You know, the Athletic wrote a piece uh, that stated, you know, Brock Aller's affinity for Andre Drummond, and Brock Aller being an integral piece to bringing Drummond to Cleveland. So, could that still be there? You know, Brock Aller's intentions of bringing him here. I just don't know how he's going to impact the chemistry. You know, he's a guy, he doesn't finish well at the rim, 52% at the rim, 59% from the free throw line. I like to create some more spacing for RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. You saw RJ out there last night as the floor was spaced. He was wheeling and dealing and, and you know, getting his shots off into the paint late in that fourth quarter in the win against the Wizards. I just like giving those guys a bit more room. We don't know about Drummond as far as a locker room presence. Could he shake up the chemistry there? You know, he's he was on the outs with Cleveland because he didn't want to, uh, you know, accept a limited role with them. So how would he come in here and, and uh, impact the Knicks? So on the short term, of course, you wouldn't mind having a guy as a double-double machine bringing him in. But long term, I just don't think the, the league is, is catering towards his style of play anymore. And I just like to keep things flexible. I like the way that Mitchell Robinson and Nerlens Noel are flexible on the defensive end. I also like the fact that the Knicks can go with Julius in a small ball five position to give us some more offense. So I would rather go that way, but in the short term, I wouldn't necessarily mind it. I think he fits well. I think he's a better, I think he's an upgrade over Nerlens Noel. Um, you know, how much of an upgrade you know, people can debate that. Um, the, the, the question I have is how much does that stunt Mitchell Robinson? You know, he's a young guy that they're invested in and they have a high, you know, high hopes for. Um, with him being out for the last, you know, six weeks with his injury and just coming back, you know, we need to see how good Mitchell Robinson is going to be. I see Mitchell Robinson as a long-term fit, um, you know, when the Knicks have a chance to chase a championship. Uh, you know, this year they're chasing the playoffs, which is great, you know, much improved from last year, but they're not chasing a championship. And to me, like I said before, you got to look at the long lens, you know, is, is Andre Drummond the guy that you want to have eat some cap space two to three years from now when you have championship aspirations and you're building that team and trying to find those superstars versus, you know, the short term fix and maybe he's a he's an upgrade over Nerlens Noel. But, you know, if he gets a longer term deal with the Knicks, you know, he doesn't have to prove himself as a scorer and a playmaker and a post up guy. You know, if he comes in just as a, you know, a hired hand for a couple months and he's got to find his next deal, you know, he's going to want his touches in the post and that definitely, you know, clogs up the lane for Julius Randle. But when Andre Drummond is at his best, you know, he's a rim runner, he's a you know, lob catcher, dunker, and he's a defensive player. And and obviously he's a great rebounder. So, you know, if, if he's gonna play his role and have his role set and he's not gonna come in wanting those touches, I think he fits great. You know, if he's trying to find that next opportunity for his next contract, it might not work out as well as you want. I, I, just the way I see it, outside looking in, you bring in Andre Drummond and you sign him to a multi-year deal, you're trading Mitchell Robinson. Am I wrong? I mean, is there a way for those two to coexist on the same roster if you're going to have to extend Robinson eventually and pay him significant money? Yeah, you know, if you if you probably extend Drummond now, I think you actually get him at a pretty good value. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you could have both those guys around, and then at some point you either trade Drummond or Robinson. You know, it definitely, like we said, will stunt Mitchell Robinson's growth, and and I think that's a more important question. 
is Mitchell Robinson part of the future in three years? Or is Andre Drummond going to help us win a playoff series in the next two or three years? You know, and, and I, that's a trade off the, you know, the hierarchy of the Knicks have to decide what they want to do. You know, the, the New York Knicks are in the luxury of selling out every game and everybody, you know, in town has interest in them and talking about them. But are you really chasing a championship? Do you want to figure out how good Mitchell Robinson is and chase stars? Or do we just want to make the playoffs and get a little bit better and, and feel good about ourselves because we haven't been good for 20 years?